All right, joining us now is former political director for George W. Bush, Matt Schlapp. He and his wife, Mercedes, who is the communications advisor to the president, walked out of the dinner. Good morning, Matt. Great to be with you, Allison. What moment was it that caused you to get up and walk out? Well, I think when she was just continuing to pummel Sarah, it just got more and more uncomfortable. This is my wife's colleague. You can like or not like Sarah. You can like or not like her politics. It just seemed mean-spirited. Everybody around me was groaning. Uh, I was the host of Politico. Uh, the, the host of the tables eventually apologized to me for having us at their table. They felt it was cringeworthy. But for me, the worst part, I have to say, it's kind of one of these things where you're sitting there watching it, this kind of train wreck happen. I think the jokes about abortion for my wife and I were particularly just galling. It was shocking. It was like, you know, don't knock it till you try it. Uh, you know, everyone should at least have one. Uh, you got to get the baby out. I mean, it was just repulsive. It's not funny. I mean, you can have your views on abortion, but I don't think anybody thinks it's funny. And I think she just was someone who went over like a, a lead balloon. And of course, she did seem to have political animus against those of us who are conservatives. Well, and, I, uh, I, I, and look, she has a right to do what she did. She has a First Amendment right. Yep. She was that's perfectly the American way. And I have a I have the right to stand up and say, I don't need to listen to this crap. For sure. Um, for sure. But I just want to, on that second note, you tweeted, my wife Mercedes Schlapp and I walked out early from the White House Correspondence Center, enough of elites mocking us. Right. That part confuses me because right. she went after Hillary Clinton. She went after Jake Tapper. She went after Ted Kennedy. She went after Starbucks. She went after CNN. She went after Megyn Kelly. What, what part was elitist? Uh, I don't know if you were there, Allison, but there was nobody who watched her monologue who would think it was somehow balanced from an ideological point of view. And if but I why could, not? I've just we pointed out these... to you that it wasn't just cons she wasn't just going after known conservatives. No, she was her her monologue was dead focused on mocking people like Kellyanne Conway and Sarah Huckabee and anybody who has and a Jake conservative Trapper view and on Clinton abortion. And CNN. I mean, maybe you're Untrue. being overly sensitive. No, no, no. Look, look, she might have mentioned them in her talk. She mentioned Jim Acosta in her talk. But there was no question. No, but the reason why the White House Correspondents' Dinner is disassociating itself or distancing itself, as you said, from this comedian. And almost every journalist I respect sent a tweet out over the weekend saying that this was a low moment for the dinner and they felt shame for what happened there. I don't think it's fair to now say, with all of those eminent journalists, that somehow this was an, a, a, an attack on everybody. It wasn't, and nobody in that room felt that way. Well, I'm just telling you the jokes that she made. I mean, I, I read it, okay? So I went through it and read it. And obviously, and I when watched you read, it. right. And when you read it and you watch it, there's different impressions, for sure. But I'm just saying that she seemed to be an equal opportunity make funner of. <laughs> um, well, I'll just say this, Allison. Andrea Mitchell and all these other wonderful, even Mika Brzezinski came out and uh, disassociated herself mm -hmm. from it. And she's not exactly a Trump fan. The, the, the dominant uh, members of the media came out. Look, I, when I went to the party afterwards, I had people walking up to me and apologizing, just saying, this is not the way uh, we wanted the dinner to come across. You know what's ironic, Allison? Yeah. The White House press corps had its moment to really look graceful because the president was risking looking like the little guy who wasn't mm -hmm. willing to come to the dinner and take the shots. Yeah. And instead, they made his decision to skip the dinner look like it was the best political decision ever. Mm -hmm. and, th and they really missed their opportunity. They say yeah. it's about the First Amendment and all these values. Instead, they just went into the gutter. And I just didn't I mean, need look, to listen the, the to the it. The journalists who are involved with the White House Correspondents Association said that they didn't know what she was going to say. In the interest of giving a comedian free reign and letting right. her have her creative expression, they didn't tell her what she could and couldn't say. You know, Allison, a little bit of me has sympathy for them. You know, I put on CPAC every year with our board, and, you know, I don't always make the right decisions on invitations. It's not an easy sure. thing to do, so I give them grace for that. Yeah. And I also applaud them for the fact that when it bombs and when it's off target and when it's mean, when you're trying to be funny, uh, it's, it's the right thing to do is to stand up and take ownership for it. Yeah. So I give, them a, I give them credit for doing that. And I think they have a real, there's a real moment to figure out whether this dinner is serving a purpose or not, and it gives them a chance to think mm -hmm. about that. And so, Matt, what part was it about the jokes, the, the few jokes about Sarah Sanders? Did you think that um, she was go the comedian was going after Sarah Sanders' looks? I thought the smoky eye thing, definitely. Um, there was this whole conversation about bringing a makeup artist into the White House, and, uh, and there has always been sometimes an obvious and sometimes a subtle mm -hmm. reference to uh, Sarah's appearance. And, uh, and I felt like that's, that was beyond the, the, the pale. I also think when it just says she lies, she lies, she lies. Now, look, we have big political disagreements in this country, mm -hmm. and I think it's wrong for journalists to take that next step. And granted, she's a comedian, but plenty of journalists do it as well. 
is yeah. they take the next step. Just present the facts. Let the American people decide yeah. if they think someone's lying. And the journalist shouldn't be the one to say that the president or that his spokesperson is lying because what that does to 50 percent of the country yeah. is it makes them feel like they're not credible to listen to. I anymore. understand that debate. Obviously, we're fact based. So when the president is fact free or he doesn't stick to the facts, we do have to call that out. But in terms of the uh, going after Sarah Sanders looks, I just want to ask you, did you feel the same way when President Trump said in an interview with Rolling Stone, look at that face? Would anyone vote for that? Can you imagine that? the face of our next president, the laughter grows <clears throat> faint behind him. I mean, she's a woman, and I'm not supposed to say bad things, but really, folks, come on. Are we serious? That was about Carly Fiorina. Yeah, look, I, I was on your show throughout the campaign, and we talked about these moments with, uh, with the beauty pageant and with the judge and with Carly, who's a, a friend of mine. And uh, I, I, I feel like the president is at his worst when he uh, talks about certainly a woman's looks or a, someone's physical appearance. If he'd stick on the agenda, he'd do much better. Fair. The dinner but did wasn't you, about him. But did you the dinner speak was out? about Sarah. The dinner was no, about Sarah hold on Huckabee a second. Sanders, wait, wait, we're not done with staffer. that, Matt. Would you, have, did you, would you have walked out of the president's speech when he, when, if he said that about Carly Fiorina? I don't know. As I said, you know, the thing that was the most appalling to me at this dinner was joking about the killing of unborn children, which I don't think, find funny. I don't think anybody finds that funny. I understand. This comedian, it wasn't just about Trump. Is about her mocking the values of a lot of Americans across this country and yeah. a lot of conservatives. But you, but you, there obviously there's been a lot of focus on her, whatever she said about Sarah Sanders. Some people don't didn't interpret it as going after Almost Sarah everybody Sanders. Did. Look, some people, I hear you uh, yep. for sure. But some people have said that no, it was actually about her character and the character of this um, uh, Aunt Lydia. Um, but what about this? Uh, I just want to remind you because I just want to check your your comedy meter, okay? Sure. Matt, so this moment that President Trump has always said was a joke when he mocked a disabled reporter. Let's watch this. Right after a couple of good paragraphs, it's, and it's talking about Northern New Jersey draws the prober's eye, written by a nice reporter. Now the poor guy, you gotta see this guy. Oh, I don't know what I said. Ah, oh, I don't remember. He's going like, I don't remember. Should the people behind him have walked out? I don't think they. I don't think it's clear to this day what he meant by doing that. I've you seen don't Donald think Trump, that he was mocking a disabled I, I've reporter. I've seen. Don, look, we have spent two years going through all the tape of all the things Donald Trump has done. Yeah. And I understand that there's a point of view that this man is the the worst guy in the no, world. No, just that. asking if you're offended but by that I, joke. But, Are you well, offended by that joke? But what you're trying to say is, is that because maybe the president has been over the line, mm -hmm. that it's fine for the White House press corps to no, be over the line. I'm I think that's the wrong way to look at uh -uh, it. Uh-uh, Matt. I'm asking I've your heard the president Are you explain, only offended when it's a comedian at the White House Correspondents Center, but not at no. what the president says are these sort of uncomfortable, cringeworthy jokes? I think that the impression that the president was trying to make fun of the man physically yeah, is a, it could be a stretch. I don't know what he was doing. I've seen the president do you this kind of think motion. That, that was the president making fun of the reporter's movements, the reporter's body language. I don't, Allison. I don't know. But we spent two years. I've seen that clip, a, a, probably a thousand times. Yeah. And I know the inference is to try to say that the president did that to make fun of this man's physical maladies. Like if that's it. why he did it, Allison, then it's wrong and it's reprehensible. I don't think it was, I don't think that was what people felt like he did. And look, you guys what? have prosecuted this case against Trump for Matt, two years. I'm saying that for two you're, years, you're I've giving watched the president this. a I've huge been, benefit of the no, doubt I'm not. here, but you're not no. giving this comedian a benefit of the doubt. So do you I'm have just any doubt? Do you have any leader. doubt in your mind that there's a difference between an elected official sitting up there at a dinner, having to take the tough shots, yes, and a staffer, there is a and huge a staffer difference between what who the has a lot of courage of to the sit United up there. States says and the bar we set for him versus a comedian. I've there heard you and be. Chris talk about this all morning. I get that. But if you're going to act like there's a moral superiority, which many people in that dinner did, yeah. they act like they're better. They act like they're the truth tellers. Shouldn't when they the say it's about be the, better let, than a Let comedian? me finish, though. Let me finish. When you say it's about the First Amendment and somehow reporters are keeping the president honest, you said in this interview, oh, but we have to do the truth -o meter. We yeah. have to say when he's wrong. Yeah. Then I just say to all of you who are going to take that moral high ground, you better be right. 
You better be right mm -hmm. all the time. And you better make sure that the American people respect that you don't have political animus. And what that dinner did is it demonstrated to the American people yeah. that there is a political animus against this president. This president is very imperfect. Look, you know We've talked about the, it for two on years. That. Hold on a second. I've for two years. I have taken all the, the tough questions. is always made fun of. Allison, Every I have taken all the tough Democrat, questions for you. Republican, they're always made fun of. They're the, roasted at this dinner. No, that's, no, that's, that's not right. It is right. No, I go to this probably dinner. probably 18 of these. Mm -hmm. The president is always roasted. Barack Obama was roasted. Me, George W. Bush was roasted. Let me just always. help. Let, but let I'm just, just asking about your consistency. Okay. Your consistency. And I've been on your show for a long time. I'll think, take all these questions. I've answered all the yes, questions. Yes, and do you think, just here's my last question. Do you think the president of the United States should be held to a different standard with what he says in public than with what a Daily Show comedian? A much higher standard. A much higher standard. And by the way, all of us should be held to a high standard. And when people cross the line and do things that are repulsive and disgusting, like make fun of abortion yeah. at a big dinner, I don't think we should laugh about it and we should call it out. Sure. And by the way, Allison, you should too. I called it out. Andrea Mitchell called it out. Mika Brzezinski called hey. it out. The head of the Washington Correspondents Association yeah. called it out. Call it out. Sure. Just We've say, look, this was over it. the line. Hey, listen, Matt, we've been talking about it all morning and what people's comfort level are. Uh, but uh, what I'm asking you is if Will you're you call it out. Hey, Matt, I ask the questions here. What I'm asking you is why aren't you calling out making fun of a disabled reporter? If I said this, I'll say it again. We shouldn't make fun of people who are disabled. If that was the intent of what the president did, he shouldn't have done it. I've said on your show a million times, he is at his best when he fights on the policy agenda, because the policy agenda is what the American people are rooting him on for. They're seeing a difference in the economy. Yeah. They're seeing a difference in their lives. When it's not about that, it gets worse. But for the president also, he is mocked more than anybody on the face of the earth. Uh, and it's also I, okay for him to defend himself. Sure. And I'm Matt, okay with fine, that. But I'm saying that that dinner, that he didn't get any sort of special treatment at that dinner. I've heard all sorts of presidents on no, both no, sides that's of the not aisle right. be mocked. It's yes, not it is, right. Matt. That's what the comedians do. It, no, no, no. Well, we look. know this. Look, as a conservative, let me just say this. Let me, I'll get it off my chest fast. As a conservative, if you're going to go to a Washington dinner, you know you're going to get mocked. We knew we were going to get mocked that night. We can handle being mocked. This was beyond being mocked. This is mean-spirited. This is, this is jokes about things like abortion, things that our society really just mm -hmm. finds repugnant. And America found it repugnant, and most journalists found it repugnant, and I think it's a good thing that they found it so. Yep. Yeah, Matt, listen, it's totally your prerogative to get up and walk out, but it's it is. Just, just taking your temperature on all of these things. Would you have walked well, out well, with me? Um, no, I would not have walked out. I don't think that abortion jokes are funny. But I you. would not have walked out. I definitely thought that there were cringeworthy moments. And right. everybody has their own comfort level. That's and right. so I thought that it was interesting to check. You know, listen, your wife, Mercedes, she represents the White House. Uh, you obviously are an ardent supporter of the president. So I think that it's valuable to hear what your breaking point or where, where you are on the comedy spectrum with when people um, say things that are really uncomfortable, including the president. But Matt, listen, thank, thank you. Thank you for having me on. Thanks for being here. Okay. Chris. I mean, you got to be kidding me. Uh, not, not you. Everything you, you know, you're, you're saying is the right way. Uh, and, you know, I would tell you otherwise. But it is such obvious hypocrisy at play. How Matt Schlapp or any of these people can defend what the president did with his mannerisms. This is just one example. I could give you dozens. Well, he wasn't we defending. We could blow was right into Berman and Poppy's sure, show. He doesn't know how to interpret that. He wasn't defending. Uh, but, and he was saying if that, the president was, in fact, geez. doing what it appears that he's doing, he would not support it. So just but What I'm clear, saying is this. When our partisan politics have gotten to the point where Schlapp will defend that and say, well, I'm not really sure what he meant. And, you know, sometimes he goes defend. over the line. And, you know, so yes, and the president gets called out for that. Please, if you are going to mitigate what the most powerful man in the world says, and he's being dead serious, he's trying to divide people when he says these things. He's trying to play the base that Schlapp so protectively covets. And then you're going to get this upset about a comedian? Is Matt still there? You know, I mean, if you it's like Matt's the jokes or you don't like the jokes, that's one thing. I just feel like we, that Matt has to respond to that. I'm here. Okay, so. Yes. I mean, Matt, I'm this here. Is, look, I mean, Chris, I'm come on. I'm listening to you, Matt, but here's my take on it. And I got to tell I you. I just heard your take. It, 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 I heard it. But you, but you have to defend that. You can't give the president the benefit of the doubt on everything. You don't know what he meant to do when he made that mannerism. Please, if Chris, it were about was, your kid or your wife, you would probably change party stripes over it. But you're going to give him the benefit of the doubt. But this comedian, you're going to say, oh, this was way too far. We need to all stand up against it and walk out. Chris, on, I, never, I never said that. I asked Allison if she'd walk out with me. I made a decision, my wife and I together, made a decision 
that it was too much. We didn't know how much longer That's she was going to go on. You're f- you're and we got up it. and left. We, were si- we weren't sitting at the front table. We didn't make a ruckus. We just simply got up and left. It was simply a personal decision because it I'm was too much that. for us. Good for and you. by the way, if the president or any other politician, actually, if there are Americans who feel hurt by what they say, uh, and it's inappropriate. I don't think that's a good thing either. I don't think it's good for us to attack sure. people like this. But and, I think you, and, you guys do a splendid job of making the case uh, against when the president is overlined all the time, right? And you, you, and you invite me on, which I when appreciate. When he openly mocks but what about someone when, with disabilities, but what about you don't when have to the make press a case. Corps, There's no open question. But what about when the press corps is over the line? In this case, the White House Press uh, Corps Association they weren't the ones admitted, telling the jokes. admitted that it was a mistake to invite this so you comedian. Call it and yeah, I they admitted it. I mean, it's a You two out. should admit it as well. You two should, you two should embrace that. And we say, did it all morning. We've been talking about it. We did three I've segments. Watched you. I've watched you, but why is it hypocrisy for me to also say Because you're not as comedians... upset about what the President of the United States says on a regular basis, and he's not joking. So if you're going to care about a comedian and be so offended by jokes that you may think failed or didn't fail, it's everybody's right to feel so because different ways Don, about because, it. Because but where you, is it there? Because you feel like Donald Trump... Because you feel like Donald Trump is over the line, right? Those of us who support him, he's over the line. He is over the line, and you know it, Matt. You would never tolerate it in somebody who wasn't aligned with your political interests. Go through the tapes of all the, for the two years I've been on this show. We have walked through all of these questions. They have been well covered. I've given all the answers. I've yeah, done, I get none it. of your questions. You're not walking out on the president in terms of when he makes fun of Carly Fiorina in his face or when he makes fun of a disabled reporter. I you're wasn't not walking in the room. out on the president. You I never use language. Had, it, you don't have to be in the room to know how the president meant. See, that's what I'm talking about, Matt. I wasn't in the room. I have said things. No, you never say anything about the president like what you're saying about this comedian. true. And you I've know been on that. your show. You run the tape. I do. You when get plenty upset at Allison the- and me for asking you the questions and calling you on things that are obviously inconsistent. I'm not but you've never you. been in high dudgeon like you are this morning about anything the president has said. I've been on whatever that term meant. I've been in high that dudgeon. State of, I've been in that state so of Google mind away, many my times. Brother. Information is power. Well, Chris, here's the thing. What's good for the goose is good for the gander. This was a moment when the White House press corps actually could have done something to look graceful and to make the American people say, I get it. They're doing their jobs and they're doing it squarely. The American Instead, people do the know the American that. people believe that there is too often animus on the part of the press. Of course, and that they have the president in for of the Trump, United States says and they that have it in journalists for Trump. should be in jail. And the president times, of the United States says the media is your enemy. Come the president on. of the United mean, States on, says he that everything that's things. reported is a lie if he doesn't like it. Matt, what he are has you talking about, Matt? Come on. I don't, I, I don't, I don't buy into any of that. I don't what think did that's I correct. just say that isn't true? He what said did that I all, just say that he hasn't said? All should be in jail? Come on. No. He just said in the Comey book, in one of the memos and the reflected uh, you know, literature in that book, or whatever you want to call it, it's a whole other discussion, that maybe we should go back to putting journalists in jail. That'll teach you about leaks. He didn't Chris, say you, that? Chris, do you think it's good to make fun of abortion? Did, oh, did that on, offend you? Just hold on. Let's go one step at a time. Look, but look, I mean, I'm you're, a practicing you're, Catholic. You know that I, I have my own feelings personally about what's right and what's wrong, but I'm a journalist, and you're open to everybody's views, and if a joke is good, it's good. Yeah. If it's bad, it's bad. But it wasn't so good, was But hold it? on. It so hold good. on. The president didn't say that putting journalists in jail may help stop the leaks? Did he say it or no? I don't know. You know he did. See, that's what I'm saying, Matt. You play with this selective curiosity, selective okay, so outrage. Let, let, let me, okay, so let me just answer the question. Do I think journalists should go to jail for reporting leaks? Right. No. I don't care what you think. Do you think people, government say do I think people in government should go to jail if they break the law? Yes. If the yeah. president said that journalists should go to jail for printing leaks, he did say I would it. tell him I disagree with him. OK, feel free. We, we no, did this with John Adams. Adams. Well, you the don't say that the comedian, you disagree with the comedian. You don't say I that. Do. You say, I had to walk out. It's terrible. It shows America this and it shows out. America that. I didn't but you have don't to feel that out. about Trump. And that's I, why the needle doesn't move. The reason Chris, the base isn't you, growing, Matt Schlapp, is what you're saying right now. The base isn't growing because you are not open to anything that you don't agree with. Then why am I on your show? Because you Why want the platform, and we reward you for that. And when you come on and That's you get to make your case, but it doesn't say. mean we have to accept That's it when it doesn't line up with the facts. If you looked at the social media after I come on your show, it's very mean-spirited. I'm sure you all get it as well. Yeah. I'm not growing my platform by coming on your show. I'm coming on your show because I believe in my heart that if we can't talk to each other, yes, I'm a conservative, but if we can't talk to each other on these platforms, our democracy is doomed. If the White House Correspondence Center can't have a fun nature with both Republicans and Democrats, make fun 
of Pelosi, make fun of Trump, and show that the American people, you can have political disagreements, yet you can come together and still laugh a little bit and have a glass of wine together. We're doomed. If, if, if it's all Fox on one side and all CNN on the other side and nothing that brings people together, yeah. we are doomed. If my organization, CPAC, does nothing but bring on conservatives and only talk to conservatives. That is what we you do. We are doomed. That is what you do. You are that people up on stage you're invited. mocking. You are you're invited. You are people you're up on stage invited. mocking me openly as if I'm some kind of enemy. You never came on and apologized to me. You never sent me a note. I don't know what you're note. talking about. You know damn well what I'm talking about. I do not know but what But I'm you're not the about. news. I'm not what Chris. matters. You Chris. are deciding what matters and what doesn't <laughs> matter. We have you on this show as an embrace of democracy. If we censored people's Good. opinions, that would be different. You're allowed to be on this show whenever Good. you want, even though we get beat up. That's why Allison and got you're off invited because she didn't you want to deal with it full time. You and 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 I invite you every year through CNN, and you're invited again. Come to CPAC. I'll let you speak. But Matt, and I think a, that that's important Matt, that we this do is that. what I'm saying. Allison yes. conducted a very fair interview with you. She gave she you points of pushback for Thank what you. happened uh, with the both. comedian. She, she went after does. a lot of people, including CNN people. She scolded the media for how uh, we dealt with covering Trump. The Some comedian. of us, uh, the comedian yeah. did. And that was all. They're all fair points. Nobody, and they were good reminders. But, but let me tell America, you, your outrage at her is not Nobody in America matched. thinks that that was a balanced treatment politically. Oh, that's nobody, fine. Chris. And you may be right. right. But it doesn't have to be. A comedian doesn't have to be That's balanced. right. Okay, 90-10, whatever. But well, look, you're okay. it's okay for you to be upset about about it. Here's what's not I'm not okay. upset. I just felt like it was rude. Oh, you and clearly I didn't were. You there. walked out. You made sure everybody knew why you were no, walking it's not out. True. You were, you, they were pick up about it all over the place. I was reading about it at home. Chris, I did not. I did not handle myself you that way. Out. You weren't there, and you don't know. Well, but I know how it was reported. See, that doesn't mean it was right. Come on, this is our problem. Well, it's, it's, Just because it's, something is reported, but you did it's walk right? out, right? Yeah, but he didn't storm out. Is what he said. I didn't storm out. I said you stormed out. I said you got up and you left, and you let people know why. Is that all true? I did not tell people why. I tweeted later in the car because so my then wife you did and I tell were in our why. car, and we were like, really, that was despicable. Right, and so we then you tell did tell people. people why. So what I just said is 100% accurate. That's not my point. My point is this. I didn't. <laughs> if you want kumbaya and you want people to come together, it's not going to happen because there's a lot of division. But there is common ground. It can but happen. I'll tell you what corrupts the common ground. I'll tell you what corrupts uh, the initiative to take action on what matters to the American people, which is about 80% of the issues, right? You guys spend time on the 20. Why? Because division sells. It sells for partisans. We it get that. It sells for you, Chris. But let me, t let me tell it you. It sells for you. Uh, well, let me tell you. It's, it's a mixed blessing having to go it after is. this stuff all the time. Uh, let me tell you. I'm living that reality. So is Allison. But I'll tell you this. When you come on and you are upset about this comedian, the way you are right now, that's your right and it's fair. But you do not match that in any way when it comes to the president and his actions. I watched you in this interview say you're not sure what the I'm president not. meant when he was clearly mocking the exact disability of the reporter that's not that right he was because talking you can, about. That's not right because you can pull hundreds of clips where he does the very same not mannerisms. Not that way. I've, I've seen, seen the do clips. That I've seen the lame defenses. I've this seen is that a man mannerism. who but says Chris, ugly and divisive things on a regular basis at that same rally in Michigan. Chris, you're he, gonna, he, what you're trying to do is pick out the flaws of Trump to make a larger point. I'm trying point. to say that and, you and should be you equally need to outraged. Listen to, that but what you also you need respect. to listen to is that there are a lot of Americans out there who, when they watch your show yeah. or when they watch other shows on television, right. they feel like they're not. They feel like there is a, a, a desire to get Trump, that the, you don't like Trump, that you're trying to hold Trump down, that you're 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 not holding. I know the that's other because side people like you standard. are telling them that, Matt. No, because I'm, you're telling them that at your little CPAC event, and when you go little, out and you speak to people, big. you're saying the, the president big. of Michigan said they hate you. The media hates you. Are you outraged by that, Matt? Uh, I felt I felt like you at felt that what? dinner that people no, who not have the a dinner. When the president party, said, "Are you going to let audience, me answer?" The, no, I'm not. When the when the president oh, said to great. the audience, "The media hates you." How'd you feel about that? Because I didn't hear it in your interview with Allison. Okay, so Chris, as a conservative, I do feel like there is a dominant piece of the media that hates our point of view on issues. I do. That's not I think what he said. They, when she mocked abortion, the room laughed. The room laughed. Uh, I couldn't I believe gonna, anybody listen, could laugh. We, I wasn't there, but it sounded like that that one did there not go There were groans too, well. Allison. There were groans too. But you all have to admit, you guys work in the media. You look at your colleagues. How do you think they voted in the last election? You know that they didn't vote a majority for Trump. They were probably with Hillary. This is just uh, Matt, a fact. The whole that, dinner I, I started off. I Even I if it were true, it doesn't mean that there's an animus. It is true. Um, it doesn't mean that there's an animus. It doesn't animus. mean that it has to affect their reporting. I agree. That's but right. I think a lot of Americans but, believe that it can. And I think when Margaret yeah. started off the dinner by saying, 
We all know that our president said it took a village. There was a lot of laughter because there's a common look. The conservatives and the liberals and the Republicans and the Democrats in that room know that that's a favorable There's nothing room conservative for about mocking disabilities, about mocking immigrants, about mocking what character and family is about and respect for your spouse and women. There's nothing conservative about any of those things. See, but you have and a you moral, guys have decided to swallow you, it because it plays to political advantage. You make and a that's moral the truth. You make a moral judgment uh, against Trump. I make and no that moral is why judgments. people don't feel that's I make what, none. you just did. I make none. That's I'm saying those are not cons those are conservative bedrock. You those guys are, used to make those it, issues your signature, and you, now you ignore them all for political expediency. That is not true. That's my that point. is not that is not true. What well, Trump then you is, come on this show and you be outraged about some of the things that he says that Chris, check those boxes that used to make you sick about. Chris, both I did I, I did your show for two years. And you asked me all these questions in the campaign. Yeah, and you and now you're assuming my answers are different than what they were. And the fact is, is this. What Donald Trump is doing as president is very much standing up for those right. values. He's done more to do things for the conservative movement than we've seen uh, in a generation. And I have to stand up and try to help him get that done. I believe in what he's trying to do. I, I understand that you think that personally you, you find him morally reprehensible. This a lot of us true. don't find You're that. You're putting words in we our don't... mouths to once again feed a narrative. But we got to go. We have other people to talk to this um, morning. <laughs> Matt, thank Allison, you for the Matt Marathon. My Lord. Yeah, well, well Matt. Thank you. Uh, we we appreciate you coming on and talking. Thanks for to having us. me on. Thank you for being okay. here. Okay.